Uh, welcome to the next session of the physiology lecture discussion series. And so today's topic of my discussion will be mainly focusing upon the neuromuscular junction. So students, when it comes to the professional exams, either when you're asked to write about a, 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 a brief short note on the neuromuscular junction, and this neuromuscular junction is also a very famous and a very frequently asked uh, question in the Viva Voce exams. So in this video, I'll be mainly focusing about the sequence of events, what are going to take place at the neuromuscular junction. So I have tried my level best to simplify in the form of a flowchart as to how the action potential is going to propagate through the nerve terminal to the muscle cell. So students, beginning with, so before getting into the detailed dis uh, discussion, I would like to uh, emphasize that a motor neuron, what is going to take the impulses from the uh, spinal cord to the effector muscle. So a A number of branches and this number of branches in which it is going to divide it is going to supply to the effector muscle fibers so a motor neuron what is going to arise from the spinal cord is going to divide into a large number of branches and these branches are ultimately going to supply to the muscle fiber or the muscle cell so the action potential. So whenever the action potential is going to reach at the cell body or cyton of the nerve or the neuron, this electrical stimulation of the cell body or the cyton from the dendrites, the action potential is going to propagate. So this is the myelinated nerve fiber what I have drawn and this is the exon terminal. So this is the exon terminal, what is extending from the cell body or the cyton and the electrical stimulation of the cell body, the of the cell body or the cyton, this is going to impulse is going to be conducted in the way what is called as the saltatory conduction. So the myelin sheath, what is, this is a myelinated nerve fiber. So the myelin sheath, what is covering this exon is going to help in the saltatory conduction. And finally, the electrical impulse or the stimulation, the electrical stimulation is going to reach at the this is the exon terminals. So it is going to reach at the exon terminals and on reaching at the exon terminal, they are, these exon terminals are going to end into a bulb-like or a knob-like swellings, which are called as the synaptic knobs or the synaptic bulbs. So these are the sites where the action potential, the wave of the action potential is going to finally reach. And from the synaptic knob or the synaptic bulb, there is presence of a chemical, a neurotransmitter called the acetylcholine. So in high power, when I'm going to in high power, this synaptic knob can be looked upon as in this form, the schematic diagram I have tried to simplify. So this is the synaptic knob or the synaptic trough. In other words, it is also called as the synaptic trough or the synaptic gutter. So this is the, actually the high power, the synaptic knob, what I have uh, drawn in a much detailed view. So this is the synaptic knob and this membrane, it is also called the presynaptic membrane. So this is the presynaptic membrane and these uh, synaptic knobs, they are lying in adjacent to the muscle fiber, that is the skeletal muscle fiber or the effective muscle. So students, before getting into the detailed mechanism, I would like to say that there is going to be presence of between a nerve fiber and a muscle fiber, there is presence of one neuromuscular junction. So students, one nerve fiber and one muscle fiber, it is having actually a one neuromuscular junction, but when talking of the entire muscle, so the entire muscle is having, there is 
a number of nerve neuromuscular junctions for the entire muscle. So students, this is the schematic diagram in high power I have drawn. This is the synaptic trough or the synaptic gutter. And it is containing a large number of mitochondria and the synaptic vesicles I have drawn. And these synaptic vesicles are containing acetylcholine. So students, um, um, before getting into the detailed discussion as to how the acetylcholine is going to get released from the synaptic vesicles, uh, this uh, acetyl coenzyme A, acetylcholine is, can be split into two parts, that is the acetyl part and the choline part. So the choline is basically transported from the extracellular fluid and it is transported into the synaptic trough by the diet uh, from the ECF and the choline what is there it is basically provided by the dietary sources whereas the acetyl part that is the acetyl part of the acetyl choline it is basically synthesized in the numerous mitochondria what are present in the synaptic what are present in the synaptic trough so the acetyl part is getting synthesized into the mitochondria, whereas the choline part of the acetylcholine, it is transported into, from the ECF into the synaptic trough from the dietary intake what we take. So the ultimate production of the acetylcholine, acetylcholine is getting stored in the, into the, the vesicles. So beginning with, so whenever the electrical stimulation, they are entering from the synap presynaptic membrane when the electrical stimulation reaches, what is going to happen is the first step what occurs it, it is the voltage gated sodium channels they open. That is the, whenever the electrical stimulation, the electrical impulses are reaching the synap presynaptic membrane, it stimulates the voltage gated sodium channels. So on the presynaptic membrane, there is presence of the sodium channels, the calcium channels. So this electrical stimulation is going to cause the opening of the voltage gated sodium channels. And ultimately, this will cause the calcium ions from the extracellular fluid to enter into the presynaptic membrane or through into the synaptic trough or the gutter. So this is the voltage gated calcium channels they are going to open up. And this calcium, when the calcium channels are going to open up, this the calcium from the extra extracellular fluid is going to enter into the synaptic trough or the synaptic membrane. After that, what is going to happen is on entry of the calcium ions into the synaptic trough or the synaptic gutter, what is going to happen is that the vesicles, what are containing the acetylcholine, they are going to release the acetylcholine by the process of exocytosis in the subneural space that is in the ECF in the extra this is the synaptic cleft so in the synaptic cleft the the vesicles what are containing the acetylcholine they are going to merge and ultimately they will rupture releasing the acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft now on the synaptic on reaching the synaptic cleft there this uh, the muscle fiber that is the motor end plate is there and on this there is presence of the sodium channels so this acetylcholine on reaching into the subneural cleft this space between the motor end plate and the synaptic trough it is called as the subneural cleft and the acetylcholine upon reaching this it is going to bind to the receptors the receptors what are present on the subneural cleft so these receptors they the acetylcholines are going to bind and on upon binding of the acetylcholine the sodium channels they are going to open so there is influx of the sodium from the extracellular fluid into the muscle cell and this is going to cause the membrane potential to move towards the positive side so that will cause ultimately the end plate potential of the muscle cell so this is the leading to the uh, the end plate potential and 
this end plate potential what is caused by the influx of the sodium ions is sufficient enough to open more and more of the sodium ion sodium channels and more and more of the sodium ions are going to get gain entry into the muscle cell leading to the propagation of the action potential in the muscle cell so that is there are the basic role what is played is of the voltage gated calcium channels and the ligand gated sodium channels what are present on the submural cleft so the ligand gated sodium channels they will open up this, that will cause more and more entry of the sodium ions from the ecf into the muscle cell leading to the production of the end plate potential and this end plate potential is sufficient enough to open more and more of the sodium ions into the muscle cells leading to the propagation of the action potential in the muscle cell so students in the this is the short discussion about as to how the propagated across the neuromuscular junction so the sequence of events i have tried my level best to simplify in the form of a schematic flow chart that is the prop action potential when it reaches the terminals that is the synaptic knobs or the presynaptic membrane that is going to cause the opening of the voltage gated calcium channels and once the calcium channels are getting are opened calcium influx is going to take place the trough or the synaptic gutter and calcium enters from the ecf into the synaptic trough ultimately that will cause the exocytosis of the acetylcholine from the acetylcholine containing vesicles and the acetylcholine is finally released into the synaptic cleft moving on afterward this acetylcholine on reaching the synaptic cleft is going to bind with the receptors and this recept on binding with the receptors the ligand gated sodium channels they are going to open up and this causes the entry of the sodium ions from the ecf into the muscle cell leading to the production of the end plate potential what is commonly called as the end plate potential and this end plate potential is sufficient enough to open more and more of the sodium uh, channel sodium channels more and more of the sodium channels will open up leading to the propagation of the action potential in the entire muscle cell so students this was the flow chart so students if you do have any queries or comments you are most welcome to comment me in the comment section and if you have any doubts on the topics what you need to what you want that i should discuss you are free to welcome uh, are most welcome to comment me in the comment section so students for those students who are visiting my channel for the first time and you haven't subscribed yet please go do and subscribe my channel and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you can be further updated for my upcoming videos thank you for watching